Welcome back. Uh, here I am, Gillian, talking to Richard about some of the history and behind the scenes of accidental theatre. Um, today we're going to be talking about memberships. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Um, so why did you start a membership in Accidental? Um, a couple of reasons. One, um, the the membership actually, there's two memberships that we have right now. One is for the Never Seen It Film Club and one is the General Accidental membership. Um, the Never Seen It Film Club one was started just before the pandemic. And it was a way for us to, to kind of build an audience around a, a, a project, around an idea that made the project a little bit more sustainable. Um, it allowed for us to say, we always know that we've got X number of people already signed up so we can have a conversation with them. We can have a discussion about what they want to see, um, how they want to see it when events are on and build that little kind of relationship. But that was des designed as a little bit of an experimental kind of one. It was designed as a our first kind of foray into, into memberships and see how it would go. Uh, and then the pandemic happened, um, which we I think we had a month of the actual, uh, the first screening and then the pandemic closed it down and then we had to go online with it. So we kind of stopped it for a couple of months and then we kind of brought it back online. Um, and so it meant it kind of killed it right as it started in, in some ways. People stayed with us for, for that entire, uh, for that time, which was really generous of them. Mm -hmm. But it, it wasn't kind of what we originally envisioned the, 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 the Never Seen a Film Club uh, as being. Um, and therefore, when we came out of the pandemic, um, Emma uh, joined the team by this stage and she put a, a bigger focus on it and helped grow it. And we're starting to kind of get back to, to well w above where we were before the pandemic. But by that stage, we've also now then launched the accidental main membership. And uh, it's slightly different in that we when we started these things again, we wanted to have a conversation with our audience. We had just gone through the pandemic. Um, or at least uh, this stage we're part way through the pandemic and we wanted to find a way of engaging with the audience and having that conversation with the audience um, that allowed us to be more sustainable uh, as, as well as an organization. Um, so it meant that it was very cheap. Uh, it, it didn't necessarily have like awards like other kind of Patreon styles that like, you know, you sign up and you get lots of interesting cards with us in weird poses, mm -hmm. you know, well, graphic we design. We did discuss that, but it yeah, didn't, it didn't work happen, out. Sorry. Thank God. Um, and uh, so, we, but we wanted it to to give a reward, but but focus upon the idea of a conversation and one uh, uh, engagement and people having uh, a say in how the building kind of runs and where it goes and things like that. So we looked at different ways of doing that. Um, so we, in the end, we created uh, a Discord uh, for people instead of, uh, at that stage as an organization, we were using Slack. So we, uh, to kind of make ourselves more available, we moved the entire team from Slack over to Discord as our internal team communication. Uh, and then that meant that all of our staff were on Discord with our members as well. And people would have access to us and you know, could ask us questions about things. People don't often do that, but it's mm -hmm. kind of there as a, as a thing. And it's, it's one of the things that we want to uh, have more and more conversations about because essentially, you know, we're here to serve an audience. We're here to help people and support people and to 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 create facilities for people. Uh, and um, without that conversation, then, w you know, we'd be like any other closed off building that, you know, big brick. Uh, and already as a, as a small venue that is often, you know, a, a building that's in a certain state of repair, um, we look closed a lot of the time, but actually, so we wanted to be o as open as we could do online as well as in person. Uh, and uh, that's kind of where the membership came from. It's, mm -hmm. it's less about the financial side and much more about the community and the, the uh, engagement side. Yes. Uh, so it seems to me that the memberships, both membership schemes, the Never Seen It and the main membership scheme come from kind of three different directions. One is sustainability um, for the building, as we are not core funded by the Arts Council or, or anybody. Mm -hmm. um, uh, having a conversation and through that building community. Yeah. Um, I think that's something that Accidental does really well is building community and, and uh, the membership and the discord yeah. we especially. certainly try to i mean it's not not everything we do is going to be successful um we we have a certain amount of resources um that we can only spend in certain places but like um generally we know from lots of the team conversations over the last year year and a half 
like n nearly everything uh, comes back to well how are we serving that community how are we discussing things with them how are we making it available to them and how are we updating them and how are we kind of thanking them for for their support through the membership system so it's all designed a lot of what we'll be doing over the next kind of five years will be designed through this kind of membership idea um and it's not about you know, pay to play kind of thing that mm. you know, you have to be a part of the member to kind of get involved. There, there, there's a whole support page that we designed when we launched it that says, you know, here's how you can support Accidental if you wish to. Mm. And it's, you know, there's books, donations, there's coming and using the building, there's coming and just attending events or workshops, lots of which are very cheap or very free, mm. uh, very free. Very They're free. They're so free. So free. So free. Yeah. Um, you know, it's using the building as a way to support us, and, uh, mm. and but there's then also the membership if you wish to. Mm. What it's really helped us with as well is connect with people who are not in Northern Ireland and not in Belfast who have been able to we kind of because part of the membership offer is that you get all of our streaming shows live or the records as part of a thanks to to for being a member. Uh, it's meant that people can see our shows and see the 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 work that artists who come to this building can do. Um, and uh, that that's really exciting kind of potential for it is this growth of engagement and community that's not just focused here in Belfast but focused around the world. Mm -hmm. That's almost word for word the question, next question I was oh, going to ask that's you. Nice. So the end. Uh, <laughs> Play the tiles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we've discussed the fact that it's uh, the membership scheme allows us to be become a little bit more global, a bit more of a worldwide thing. I mean, our experience in streaming um, and the fact that we stream most of our certainly our mm. shows that we produce here, we mostly stream pretty much all of them yeah. and we encourage people who put their shows on here to stream there's a lot of evidence in um from west end and broadway streamings that actually streaming um shows helps ticket sales rather than hinders yeah um look up look that up <laughs> um, well it's, it's really it's really easy to see it's good. people understand there's a difference between a theater show or a performance that's being streamed versus yeah. the in-person experience so people still want to have the primary experience of being there in the room um, and this is just uh, I often say this is where we are right now with 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 theater and live performance and streaming um, but in a few years time this this won't just be about broadcasting in person events uh, it'll be an entirely new platform which mm. is kind of where our mindset comes but people do understand the difference yeah. and they they it's more about making sure they can reach something if they can't get there you know we're based in Belfast we're not based in Dublin we're not based in, in London so therefore we can't physically get to the West End we can't mm. physically get to the gate or to the to the, to the Peacock uh, or to the Abbey you know we have to is the Peacock still exist I don't know I, I don't know nodding. there you go um, the we, we can't get there um, uh, it, it's really expensive and even if you're inside the same city and you have kids you know it's an expensive and uh, thing to kind of get out and connect with people uh, in, in that way so we want it's a it's a accessibility and also a record as much as it is, it is about anything else so if we can stream it then it means that we can reach new people we can reach people well beyond our borders well beyond our, our building mm. uh, we can partner with lots of different places it just opens up a whole world of collaboration mm. which is the, the exciting part of it for us mm. awkward productions have obviously mm. used that really well as, as a, it's a very as good a example yeah. they've sent um, or asked us to send reviewers mm. their streamed show so they can watch it because the reviewers couldn't make the show mm -hmm. or they weren't doing any in... They yeah. did do some in London, didn't they? Yeah, because what's they, really they fun toured, about... What's weird about theatre shows, and we're kind of getting off the membership topic, but yeah. it's probably worth discussing. What's weird about theatre shows is by the time the marketing is really kicked in for small shows, I mean, it's slightly different for, for really large ones that run for five weeks or whatever. Mm. Um, by the time the, the show is over, that's kind of when the marketing is really kicking in because that's when yeah. the word of mouth is kicking in because um, people have gone to see the show, they've mentioned it to their friend, this is Ace, go and see it. Yeah. Um, uh, There's a big buzz around the show after it stops. Exactly. And um, on a tour, that's doubly so because people then have missed it when they came to their city, they can't get to the other city. 
So having that streaming option or the on-demand option allows them to connect with that show and connect with that artist and support that artist. Uh, and Linus is a, an awkward production is an, an interesting example because also he has an international connection from being uh, from Sweden uh, or having roots in Sweden and therefore uh, allows for people in his home city or from uh, his family to again connect and, uh, and support um, him as he tours and, uh, and, the, and the show. Mm -hmm. So uh, and uh, on top of that, um, we come from a, uh, a theatrical tradition that um, um, what frustrated frustrates me now and I certainly knew it at the time but we've done lots of really interesting shows Kitchen Bed and Grave um, which won a, a Stuart Parker a BBC award um, we've done uh, The Lost Martini and Gordon Olsen's Funeral a whole load of other kind of little smaller shows there's not really a record of these anymore and if we had to stream them as we kind of did with Gordon Osram's um, it means that we can kind of capture that and, and be able to have it as a record of our artistic work. Otherwise, we put all the, I think I've said it before in this, we've put all these months of work mm. into these shows, you know, years sometimes. With Kitchen Man and Grave, it took us two, two years to kind of make um, because of the script writing development process. Mm. Um, and it, uh, it, it's just gone, you know, mm. other than the experience of being there and the learning and the involvement of the, in the audience at the time. Otherwise, that, the only record we have of that show is a one wide shot from the back of the room. Uh, with really bad audio because the camera is picking up the audio from the back of the room and that's it. Um, so the the membership has allowed us to kind of invest in the streaming system, make it more available because it's all part of kind of tied in together. Um, and that's that's really exciting. We, 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 you know, we want the membership to grow because it will allow us to do a lot more programming. Mm -hmm. It will allow us to create things bespoke for people and make the facilities bespoke for people as well. There's lots of different ideas we have around how to do that. You know, because uh, there are so many theatre makers around the world. Um, I had a conversation briefly with someone last week um, who's based in, in Chicago. Um, and shout out to Kyle and Straw Dogs if you're, if you're watching. Um, and, uh, you know, our facilities are here in our time zone and they're, you know, just dark. Uh, in terms of the, the, the streaming kits, the, the, the back-end rack system. Um, but for his time zone, they're there and could be available. If we can make ways for people to be able to access it, uh, cover some costs for us and then you know make it available for others, we could be this whole interesting global hub of, of theatrical connection and our live performance connection. And it's all just there. It just takes time to, to reach out to people and talk to people and have these conversations. And the membership underpins all of that. Mm. So it allows people to support the building and allow us to have these conversations and grow and add value. Uh, and it also allows people to you know, have this conversation with us and tell us what, what they want to see. The membership scheme isn't a rewards-based scheme, uh, but there is there are some kind of thank yous to members uh, with live streams and yeah. available and the discord channel for chatting with yeah. staff and other members um there is some small rewards like at the beginning we used to give out tote bags that you designed that is and true we're currently in the in the next iteration of the design of that yep yeah mm -hmm. yeah in fact, i think people got to vote on some of the options of it we should put up the options again okay um keep people uh, give, give them give them uh, give them a second whack at the, what what might be designed yep <laughs> um yes so yeah there are kind of smaller things as well as ongoing things as well as um membership fund days mm -hmm. and things where do you see the membership scheme going from here obviously ideally lots more members and lots more members like you say makes us a much more sustainable company mm -hmm. um and able to produce more shows or do more streaming and yeah. do more things um, but where do you envision it being in one year, five years, ten years? What, what I would love in, in, in the short term and the long term is just more conversation. So um, the, the tendency of the Internet is that 99 percent of people lurk and one percent engage. Um, and we want to kind of increase that percentage of engagement. We want to hear from people more. We want to make them sure they, they feel free to comment and discuss. So the, the, what Gillian was alluding to earlier is that we've put up some consultation that we recently got from the Belfast City Council um, uh, about what the building might look like in a couple of years' time, depending upon which way we go with it. So people have a chance to comment on that right now and, and, and say you know, what they like about it, what they don't like. I've been quite open about what I don't like about it uh, and see what people like. But that 
even whenever we pass move on pass on sounds much darker uh even when we move on move on doesn't sound great either uh after after our time with accental has ended all of it is euphemistic Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, after we're no longer working here, yes. uh, then um, uh, the audience is partly, as well as you know, the board and other structures, are partly the the um, uh, keep the, the the company on track. They they tell people what they want, and you know it's always then uh, the organisation is always learning and responding. So it's infrastructure to to pass on to. to it's it's it, yeah well beyond it's programming it's ideas it's a uh, it's a community um you know northern ireland's really bad for building small communities that then disappear really quickly mm. um the the, the 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 difficulty with that is that i mean it's just it's a really hard thing to do to build a long time sustainable community yeah. to start with it takes one person putting a lot of effort in yeah. and a lot of people don't have the staying power and it's the same with anything exactly yeah it usually needs someone to someone or some people to drive it and yeah. that often in northern Ireland means one or two key people and as soon as they believe then everything kind of falls apart yeah um and we want uh, we want to be able to pass uh pass to the next team who, who are taking control um a community of people who will then safeguard what we help start uh, as well as then contribute to to where the, the organization goes next I thought that was uh, Richard's subtle way of telling us we're all fired, but it turns out well, he's going to kill us all. So yeah. that's uh, great news. Well, we're in the basement, and I don't know what the ventilation is like today. So, is the CO two monitor on? Yes, it is actually. Okay, yeah. well, we're yeah, probably we're fine. We're fine. Fine. Yeah, <laughs> great way to end. The end. We're all dead. Yeah. <laughs> um, great. Well, thank you for giving us some insight into the membership. No problem. And Gillian, you're involved in the membership. Obviously, as as uh, is one of the main people on Discord, that he posts is true. the things. I do try and post when yeah. uh, when I can and deal with the Discord bot, who is <laughs> <laughs> who is troublesome sometimes. Um, yes, so yeah, I enjoy the Discord. I think it's a really good way of people getting to know Accidental and know us individuals personally but also to know the kind of personality of accidental as a whole mm. um and of the other members and of the other people involved such as the kind of um global stream team that uh, that you know through office hours um who help us stream most of our shows it's usually somebody in singapore or california or australia or somewhere <laughs> doing something there in the background switching or i don't know what the other terms are so doing something else um so it's really great to be able to be in contact with those people that like I wouldn't mm. otherwise I wouldn't have any reason to be to yeah. talk to them and them for the members as well I think it's really great to well it's, what's nice is most of them are also members they've actually chosen to support yeah. the, the organization as well um, and they they, they um, is really they're a really good example of people who are getting involved actually getting their hands mm. in, uh, involved in into things and that's what we want to encourage yeah and you can be just like them and join the stream training program if you wish yeah that's all for plugging. Thank you very <laughs> much for joining us this month. Uh, we will see you next month where we're going to be talking about something else we don't know yet. Thanks. Thank you. And since we're talking about memberships, then uh, we might as well thank all these people who might be either here or maybe floating around us like a word cloud um, or, you know, maybe they're just, you know, in the ether. Somewhere. Superimposed upon my face. Maybe. Who knows? But thanks. Thank, thanks. Thank you, people. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Let's just sit here and... Oh, yeah, that person. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank you, that person. Yeah, you know who you are. Yeah. GDPR, we can't name anyone. No. No. But you can see that. But we can put their names. Well, Maybe that is GDPR. Why does YouTube do this with GDPR? Do pe Maybe <laughs> do we have to check whether people want to be named members? That's a question mark, yeah. People who are on Discord Maybe everything is just names. asterisks. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, we can't see it because it's in our it's imaginations. It's in the edit, yeah. At the moment. Okay. Let's just put it up, well, and then we'll, we'll get a no we'll get a message telling us that we've breached information commissioner rules. Or if any of the members watch it and then sue us. Oh, no one's going to watch it. That's true. Nobody yeah. watches it. It's fine. Apart from the one person who said boo last time. Thank Bye. you.